Hi guys, what are we gonna do today? Today we're doing another fun little Christmas project. Really fast and simple. We're just gonna get started here and I'm gonna show you how I did this. So I am using this fun 11 by 17 paper that we have, but you could use any sort of blackboard. You could paint a piece of paper dark. I just thought this was fun because this was already done. And all I'm going to do is we are going to heat emboss onto this. Because of the coating on this, I found that the white ink did not want to get very dark on here. And even the paint, it was like sliding. So the embossing was the best. So I'm going to be using my IOD Swish stamp, which I really like. It's very, very big, so you need to make sure you have enough room. And I'm going to line up my letters to make sure. And I'm using a couple different fonts. This one is the Farmhand font. The last one I'm using, I already have it preset up. Here's Farmhand. And this one is Typeset, where it says World. And I know these are going to fit. So if you have a plastic sheet, these are called grid mounts, but if you have some sort of a acrylic sheet, you can lay all your pieces down, lay that on top, and they'll all be lined up for you. These I can put on the mount all at once and stamp it down at once. This one, since they overlap, I'm doing each one individually. If you're using embossing powder, you need a watermark ink pad. Well, mine doesn't look very clear here, but it's a clear, sticky, Ink. I'm going to put this on here. Now it's really hard to tell on the dark. I am using extra fine and I really like using the extra fine embossing powder opposed to the regular one that's a little thicker, especially when you have a lot of detail. And in a moment you're going to see our J. See where I haven't gotten it yet. I'm going to tap it right back into its container. Now, the two options. You can either heat set this and then add your O, or you can do all three letters and then heat set it off. I have a little excess here, so I'm just going to carefully brush that off. Because anywhere that there is excess, it is going to emboss. I'm going to be overlapping this O onto the J. Now, if any of it comes off, when I put my embossing powder, it will refill in on the J again. But since on the dark, it's so hard to see, I wouldn't line my letters up very well, probably. After a few tries, I found out this really was the simplest way to do it. Let's do the Y. Now at this point, I could just finish the rest, but I think I'm just going to emboss these pieces right now and then get to the next part. So I'm using my heat gun for embossing and I'm just gonna heat this up and you'll start seeing it get very shiny when the embossing powder melts. The other thing I think is kind of cool is that you can actually see where they overlap. You see the fun little lines in there. So let's start on our next words. So right here I have two, joy two, and I'm gonna do that next. I'm gonna put that right there. So once again, just using my Versamark. And once again, because it's so hard to see on dark, I'm gonna do each section at a time. If you get a little heat over what you've already embossed, it's not a huge deal, but if you leave it on too long, it kind of burns the embossing powder. Now we're gonna do the bottom part, and this is nice because I can do this all at one time. I'm just putting my tea back on my plate. And I had lined this up earlier so I knew it would fit in this paper. Lay carefully, don't let it slide. I'm just going to press this embossing ink onto the paper. 
What's nice about embossing powder, it seems like you're using so much, but when you pop it back into your container, you realize you've used almost none. So it really does last for a long time. And just very carefully look and see if there's any excess. Wipe that off. Okay, let's heat this up. I'll let this cool off for a second and then we're gonna do some aging and seal it and then we'll be done. So I'm gonna use my crackle stamp on this and I'm using a gray. And just put a little bit on here. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is use my vintage photo distress oxide and go around the edges a little bit. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just seal this. I am using liquid patina. You could use any sort of a sealer you would like. And this also reactivates a little bit of the distressing ink that I put on there, the distressing oxide, and it kind of makes it blend throughout. And if you wanted this in gloss, you could have just used the gloss sealer. We're gonna let this dry. Okay guys, I hope you thought this was fun. It sure was easy though. So I hope you give it a try. You could do any saying, any words, anything you would like, but whatever you do, have fun.